how to curb negative thinking and negative associations by <clears throat> negative thinking i mean certain thoughts that arise in your mind when they shouldn't and these can be thoughts of fear shame guilt resentment and anger things which are going to sink you down further into a spiral of negativity and by negative association i mean thoughts that prop up in your mind at inappropriate times say you're trying to chant hanuman chalisa and you are having uh horrid visualizations uh it could be uh, sexual pictorial representations in the mind or uh fixation in the mind towards certain body parts uh that are uh that are discouraging and sometimes shame provoking in the individual who experiences it you are trying to touch the feet of uh uh a holy person and you get a foot fetish things of that nature mostly sexual in origin uh but uh could be could be anything that is uh counterintuitive and disruptive to the practice that you intend to perform so how do we get rid of negative thinking and negative associations uh the practice that i have come up with in the uh mode of dhyana tells me that you have to disown and delegate those are the two levels at which you will counteract and curb and eventually annihilate these negative thoughts and associations so first is disown disown means whenever a thought appears in your mind you follow ramana maharishi's uh, adage which is to whom does these thoughts arise you become a uh non owner you tell us that uh, this is propping in the mind and this is not the atman or the soul that is thinking these so these are not your thoughts you disown the thoughts you are merely a witnesser an observer a neutral soul experiencing these thoughts because of certain uh experiences that you might have had in the past or certain negative thought generations that the mind perpetrated because you were uh in that guna association uh influencing association of negativity so something you're surrounding with which was not uh very uplifting that led to the mind to down track and find a negative visualization for this uh thought that that is propping up in our mind so that is becoming uh a witnesser and observer of the negative thought and saying that these thoughts are not mine henceforth i don't need to feel guilt i don't need to be resentful for a prop up of these thoughts in my mind the moment you disown uh you have to delegate which means monkey mind needs a business it won't sit around uh and be idle uh, and be thoughtless which will happen in the higher states of ashtang yoga when you go in dhyana dharana and siddhi but in the earlier stages why do people uh become extremely if they have any thoughts that are bothering them they might become extremely careful about their environment and surroundings because they want to get rid of every single dirt speckle that might be there uh because some negative associations are bothering their brain so you know as uh yog as niyog um are the are the initial steps uh of ashtang yoga which is uh, shaujam droho nati manita in 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 gita you say you have to maintain a hygienic surrounding and uh, that helps to kind of uh a kind of a clean mind is a, a clean body is the house for a clean mind so you have to maintain the external environment a cleanliness to maintain the cleanliness of the mind and that's a great place to start it's a defensive mechanism and some people might feel they are ocd uh to have this compulsive cleaning binges but basically it shows there's some unresolved turbulence in the brain that needs to be addressed so that uh, we are more at ease with who we are and how we react to circumstances so uh after you have disowned 
uh, and become a witnesser, observer, uh, a neutral ananda, as I call, a neutral observer, but still in anand or bliss, uh, you have to delegate some action. Now, what do we do in the delegation portion? Basically, uh, we have to curb and totally demolish, decimate the negative thoughts that arise through the well evidence based practice that some people try in flashbacks or nightmare disorders or in PTSD, post traumatic stress disorders, which actually uh, makes sense to me, is uh, called IRRT or image reprocessing and rescripting therapy, which, in, uh, which means whatever imagery is uh, bothering you because you have. Uh, gone through the experience in the past and keeps popping up in your mind, if it's not addressed and ended, it will keep popping up every time. There is no escapism. Uh, muting or trying not to think about it only make the thought grow stronger and more frequent in your mind to totally, uh, to totally devastate your existence and activities of daily living. So, in reprocessing and rescripting, you put an end to the story. Say you are getting a violent visual imagery of uh, an individual um, who uh, who might have perpetrated some sort of uh, attack on you, or you 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 are getting something negative uh, in your mind while you're trying to chant uh, names of uh, holy uh, holy persons. In that case, you have to see some anti-associations or ways in which you you will end uh, that story say you have uh, you are extremely uh, extremely fearful of snakes and you're seeing snakes all the time in your dreams in your thoughts a rope makes you think of a snake uh, anything that is uh, slimy slithery makes you think of a snake so what you do is you create an image in the mind that you uh you you roasted that snake and you ate it because you're extremely hungry. Something like, something which is extremely uh, violent should be counteracted with extreme violence uh, in the end. Or uh, the snake, you opened your mouth and you broke its fangs and you took out all the poison ducts. So that way it's not harmful to you anymore. Any imagery, it could be burning, killing, uh, shredding, uh, for the stuff that y- you don't enjoy seeing. If you are trying to visualize Hanuman and you're getting uh, diabolical images or uh, body parts that you don't want to infiltrate your mind, you you think what Hanuman does best. He is good in burning Lanka. He can burn uh, these uh, body parts with his tail uh, and, and put an end uh, to those uh, violent, vivid, uh, visualizations that are inordinately and inappropriately uh, percolating uh, your your chanting. So never stop chanting. Never stop a good practice just because a bad visualization has come in. You have to find ways around it and put in positive affirmations. That's the second one that you have to do. So in positive affirmations, you tell yourself that I am good enough and I will continue chanting. I will continue doing the good work that I'm doing no matter what. That positive affirmation should be followed by visualizations uh, because visualizations uh, of you succeeding to chant, you succeeding to sit in front of Hanuman's feet, you succeeding in becoming a great disciple and more at peace with yourself and loving the people that you want to love, those kind of active, vivid visualizations. And when you have tagged it with... uh, uh, the right images, you have converted your affirmations into positive associations. So first thing is you kill the, uh, kill the negative associations or the anti-associations, which is the uh, disruptive, cringeworthy images that prop up in your brain while you're trying to chant. And the second is uh, you have to create an affirmation that I can do this. And the affirmation is always followed by Uh, visualization and beliefs. So you have converted those positive affirmations or assertions into uh, positive uh, pictorial representations of you being successful all the time. Uh, And henceforth, you have given the monkey mind some assignment uh, in which way it will 
uh, delegate itself in a higher purpose in life. You can also put pictures of uh, individuals who have been extremely strong, like Neem Karoli Baba. You can put a picture of Neem Karoli uh, or any saint you follow or Shiva, Vivekananda, Paramhansa, whoever uh, fancies your uh, imagination and you feel was a great individual because we are followers and we need strong leaders in the in the mode of guna of sattva or the balance and harmony uh, with some sprinkles of passion of rajas to kind of uh, rock ourselves out of the uh, indolence, ignorance uh, of tamas, the compulsive repetitive images that are blocking our uh, thought processes and mind. So my friends, uh, in short, if you are being constantly nagged by negative thoughts uh, and negative imageries, uh, negative associations in your brain, you have to disown those thoughts and imageries saying that I am a witnesser, observer, uh, neutral Atman that is experiencing these thoughts because of certain uh, activities and experiences I might have had or certain uh, thought processes that might have crept up in my brain. But I am not these thoughts. I am the Atman which is above these thoughts. And hence, when, when you rationalize the existence, uh, there is some sort of uh, disowning uh, of those thoughts. And the next thing you do is delegate, which is you create anti-associations or image rehearsal and, uh, I'm sorry, image rehearsal therapies, of course, but more importantly, image uh, reprocessing and re-scripting therapy to prevent these flashbacks uh, or negative associations, followed by affirmations uh, of I can do it, I will chant the names of God, I will do uh, what I want to do, and then visualize yourself doing that. So you have some positive visualizations that you create uh, in your quiet mind, and uh, then uh, revel in the beauty of those positive associations. You can put pictures of Neem Karoli or the person you love the most uh, while you're chanting. And that's why your mind has something good to fixate upon and not get uh, dwindled by the negative reading. So disown, delegate, and henceforth, you can come out of these negative thoughts and associations. Hope you like this video. Thank you.